shot. This is the easiest I've ever had to answer. I'm gonna say beer. I can't even begin to describe. I'm actually gonna go crazy. I'm gonna buy everybody around on this one. I still love it that I, Anthony called me a hack in the middle of that sentence. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to Big Apple Hockey's Bar Talk, where we're gauging our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you so confident? You're going to buy everybody around. Oh, oh, dear God, I'm not confident. I need a shot. Or, you know, I'll just have a beer. So, so, play along down in the comments below. And we're going to start with a guy who might be on the trade block, guys. Ryan O'Reilly this season, 10 goals, 6 assists, 16 points. By the way, lowest plus minus in the NHL for a guy who won the Selkie before, minus 28. And he's currently out for, I think it's, is it six weeks he's out right now, I heard? Yes, it's about six, six weeks. weeks. The Rangers should acquire Ryan O'Reilly at the deadline, Mr. John Fulkowski. You know what? At first, I wanted to say shot just because what would you do with another center? But I would easily move somebody over to the wing for this guy. And they would have to they would have to retain on this. But Ryan O'Reilly would make the Rangers a real dangerous team to play against come playoff time because that would give them another established two way center, a guy that can win face offs. A guy that's got Stanley Cup and cons my pedigree. Um, I, I just don't know if they should be giving up the assets for a guy like that because it's a piece that puts you over the top. So I'm going to say beer here um, just because I, I just don't know if they're in the position to really try to kind of pull that off. I think what they think they should do is probably more akin to what they did last year, last year's deadline. Anthony. I was going to say shot too, but I think he convinced me to change to beer just because Ryan O'Reilly is your prototypical prototypical playoff player. Um, you know, face-offs, grit, uh, leadership, can can chip in offensively. Uh, but, you know, he is a center. I, I think the Ranger would be better suited on getting a, a scoring wing. Um, you know, his, his also injured teammate in St. Louis, Vladimir Tarasenko, could be a fit as he's a winger and he's a sniper. I think that maybe – fits a little better than getting another center. So um, for that reason, I'll go with the beer. I'm actually going to go with beer as well. I wanted to say buying everybody around, but I'm going to go with beer. The reason why also we got to admit Filipino's contract is coming up. What is Filipino's future with the New York Rangers? That's another thing that goes into it. Ryan O'Reilly would give Ryan that. Ryan wouldn't help address that, though. No, he wouldn't help address that, but he would address it for this season. And then what you could do is you, you get, give – I'm just saying in, in general with Filipino, because if you upgrade from Filipino, who was benched last night, whether or not that was deservedly so or not, that poor kid on the third goal, it, you saw the wick on his face. But the question also is, 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 is that going to make the Rangers a legitimate cup contender? It could, if they upgrade to get another defensive center, maybe that could happen. Going over to the Islanders. Not a layup. Yes, not a lot, although I do have a graphic for you on that one, uh, Phil. I can't wait for that one. Uh, <laughs> Nashville's Matthias Ekholm, and it's Matthias, signed at 6.25 until 2026. Three goals, 10 assists, and 13 points a season. Anthony, the Islanders should get Matthias Ekholm. So he's, a, I mean, he's a legitimate, you know, top four left. Shot defenseman on the left side. Uh, well, he's left Adam Pellick is going to be out a really long time. I mean, he, he would help, but uh, a lot. Um, but I'm going to answer this question the same way, you know, when we pose about Jacob Tricker and another left-handed defenseman who's available. Um, as much as I would love either of them, um, even though the Islanders really haven't had issues scoring goals, they still could use another legitimate top six forward because, you know, guys like Bailey and Beauvillier um, – they're too streaky and they don't provide enough offense. So um, I still think, you know, getting a guy like Tarasenko or, or getting Bo Horvat and moving him to the wing or moving, you know, Nelson or someone else to the wing um, would, would really help them a long way. Now, if there was a way that they could split up, you know, it would probably kill their asset pool. But I mean, if there was a way that they could, you know, get both then yeah, I, I would be all for that. But 
gun, you know, gun to my head at home or scoring forward, I think I still go with the forward. Although come playoff time, defense wins, and if Pelic is going to be out a long time, that left side is problematic, even as good as Warless has been playing. So I don't know. It's not it's not as easy as I thought when I first saw this was going to be the bar talk topic, but um, I guess I guess I'll go with a beer. Okay, Phil. That's why I posed this one. I figured this one would be, you know, get you going a little bit there, Anthony. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to say a beer just because of a lot of the things that you mentioned. Um, they could use a defenseman, but they could absolutely use a sniper more. Um, but there's also the injury situation with Adam Pellick. And you don't, we don't know how long he's going to be out for. You haven't gotten any updates as far as I can tell because you would have them first before nope. anybody I knew. Um, I, I just – I don't see – because they don't have a great asset pool. That's the biggest thing for me with it is they – the assets that you have, you would have to give up one of Ratu or DeFore or Holmstrom or something like that and then maybe first-round picks. And then what's left after that in the, in the cupboard for the Islanders? Not a lot, if anything. So uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say be, I, you know what I'm gonna change this a shot. <laughs> screw it, no, no shot, no shot. You um, know what? I'm, I'm gonna go beer, and it's because I still I have trouble looking at the Islanders and figuring out what exactly what their need is outside of trigger man for the power play. <laughs> now. I mean, you got Dobson, who's been real good for them on the power play. You got Barzell, who could distribute, and Brock Dels has been great at the bumper, and Anders Lee is up front. But you, you, you tell me, you add like a Vladimir Tarasenko. Now, now you're looking at the Islanders, going, "Oh boy, look at these guys." And uh, and you know what? I'm not convinced it's 100 percent what their need is, but he would definitely fulfill all. And he signed the 2026. Lou would definitely like that. Uh, is by the way, is USA they playing that. right now, folk? What USA Canada? Are they playing right now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's coming up shortly. So, oh, okay. I thought it was actually tomorrow, but all right. So we're, we're gonna keep getting this going. The metal game is tomorrow. All right, guys. The Tampa Bay Lightning are eight and two in their last ten. I can't believe I am actually asking this question. But the Tampa Bay Lightning are an under-the-radar team, and I'm actually going to start it off. I'm buying a round on this. When nobody's talking about the Lightning. We're all talking about different teams and everything. Like I think everybody's just kind of assuming the Lightning are done. No, the Lightning are very much there. That's it. Philk. I think with the stories with the Devils, um, their rise and then their fall, and now Pittsburgh's rise and their fall, um, I, I would I, – I think Tampa Bay has kind of gotten lost in the shuffle and things, and people aren't really talking about them. But they are they are playing well, and considering the guys that they've lost, they've had Brandon Hagel step up into a top-six role after being a third-line role, uh, third-line player last year when they acquired him. So um, Tampa Bay seems like to be like Detroit and the Devils of the – of the nineties and the two thousands where they just continue to get these cogs that come in and they play over their head or something, or they just come out of nowhere and they just continue to help the team win. So yeah, they're under the radar for me. I'm buying around on this. All right, Anthony. I'm going to go beer. Um, you know, they made it to the Stanley cup finals last three years in a row. Uh, they know what it takes. They've been there now. Um, I just think they're they they know how good they are. I think they know they're going to make the playoffs. So I think sometimes they just kind of not coast, but you know they it seems like they're just kind of just moving along, you know, at a you know slow pace and just kind of whistling Dixie. Uh, and then come playoff time, they 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 turn it up because they know what victory tastes like. Uh, they know what you have to do to get there. Um, I just kind of think that's what's going on right now. I mean, yeah, they're behind like the Leafs and the Bruins right now. Um, but come playoff time in a, in a seven game series, um, I think I would pick Tampa Bay just because you know Vasilevsky turns into Superman in in the playoffs and you know yeah. clinching games, especially so, yeah, especially closeout games. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna go with a beer here. Well, I mean they're just amazing and they just keep churning out everything. Phil, you mentioned Nick Paul when you were talking about it, right? 
Yeah, it, he just you, – you get him from Ottawa, you get Brandon Hagel, and these guys just come in and they just continue to produce. And they're replacing yeah. guys that have left, like, you know, your Andre Palats, your Tyler Johnsons and stuff like that. Can you imagine if they can – move an, a guy like Alex Kalorn and replace him with a cheaper bottom six option and then you know, go out and get maybe another score to complement that top uh, that top six. I mean, Tampa Bay would be real deadly. And then they lose McDonough and Ruta on top of that, and they bring in you know Ian Cole, and, and Ian Cole just fits <laughs> right into Ruta's, uh, Ruta's uh, spot. It just – and then Perbix comes out of nowhere, and you know he plays out well for him. <laughs> Just it's out of, out of nowhere. And you know what? Uh, you know you got to give a lot of credit to Tampa Bay's development and mm -hmm. um, their, their organizational, and and especially the Syracuse Crunch because these yeah. guys continue to come up from Syracuse, their AHL team, and just produce for them and be key contributors and come right off the bat and produce. So good on Syracuse and good on Tampa for being able to get these guys to step right in. Well, one guy that's stepping up for his team greatly right now. Tage Thompson completes a hat trick last night, including the winner against the Capitals. If the Sabres make the if the Sabres make the playoffs, Tage Thompson should win the Hart Trophy, Mr. John Fulkowski. I'm gonna buy a round on this. Um Ooh, yeah. I don't think he will if that's the case. Because if McDavid and the Oilers make the playoffs and he continues to score at the pace that he's on. Mm -hmm. He's going to be in Gretzky and Lemieux territory, and it's going to be nearly impossible to, to deny him of the heart at that point. But this should be around for me, and this should happen, because what this guy is doing is just Herculean. <laughs> it's just he's literally carrying that team on his back. So I've got to buy around on this. Anthony. I'm buying around too. Um, the guy is following up a fantastic year this year with a even more incredible year um, so far this year. Um, he's been, I mean, forget about being Buffalo's best player. If it weren't for Connor McDavid right now, I would say Tage Thompson has been the best forward in, in the NHL. And it would be hard to argue that the goals are there, the points are there. Um, you know, for someone so big, the way he skates and creates out there, it's really astonishing. Um, so good on the Sabre fans. They, they finally can use a, you know, because Eichel didn't work out to what they envisioned when they drafted him. Tage Thompson is bringing them out of their seats. Uh, so good on them. So, yeah, like Phil mentioned, if the Sabres make the playoffs, I think McDavid would still win it if the Oilers made it just because of the year he's having. It's absolutely incredible. Um, also, with that said, it's going to be hard for the Sabres to make the playoffs. You know, they're – they're four points behind Pittsburgh, six behind the Islanders, eight behind the Rangers. And I, I still, as good as Thompson is, I still take the Penguins, Rangers, and Islanders over Buffalo, um, you know, every day of the week and twice on Sunday. So it'll, it'll be difficult, but they're, they're knocking on the door, which is, you know, progress for Sabre fans. That's what you want to see. I'm going to remove the words if the Sabres make the playoffs. Right now, he's my MVP because – you could say whatever you will about Connor McDavid. By the way, Connor McDavid, we've said this in our preview. The guy is automatically nominated for the heart every single year. But it's I can't help but look at McDavid and say, well, the guy that's right behind you in scoring in the NHL is on your team. So you can't exactly be the most. And the, neither one of these guys are in the playoffs, but Tate Thompson's got, got far less talent than Connor McDavid has. I mean – don't have a Leon Dreisaitl with him. Yeah, it does. Leon Dreisaitl ain't nowhere to be found. I mean, come on, it's not even close. All right, let's go to the West.